often say in the body of corrections that I stand corrected. I've been told I should say I sit corrected because I never stand on this show. I, of course, used to stand when we started this show, but I had to stop when, there's no easy way to say this. Everybody was a real dick about it. <laughs> the vice president lives at the Naval Observatory, not the White House, which is something I'm pretty sure Obama had to tell Biden every day. <laughs> Shouldn't you be uh, getting home? <laughs> we did a surprise inspection of our writers. It was a segment on our show where we read some of the bad jokes they submitted. Matt Goldich wrote a joke about Pepsi no longer producing Sierra Mist and how that was sad because it was the main ingredient in Sierra Mist stew. This was the art card for that. And then people said in Sierra Mist, the bottle is green, not the drink. And that is the only problem with that joke. <laughs> There was also a joke about the show Wednesday. The punchline was, here's the thing, and then we showed a picture of the character thing. That joke worked. Got a proper applause break. Now, I'm not sure if people actually liked the joke or if it was just so good compared to what was around it. <laughs> you know, if you're in the desert long enough, you'll drink your own piss. Oh, it doesn't mean it's refreshing. <laughs> There's a reason Pepsi stopped producing it. <laughs> but whatever reason, be it the quality or the surroundings, people did genuinely like that joke. I will concede the point. And multiple people then in turn made this point, and now I'm quoting someone. They said, you didn't say who wrote, because we do call out the writers after their surprise inspection. Go. You didn't say who wrote the Wednesday thing joke. You do this all the time. When the joke gets a laugh, you move on without saying the writer's name. That's true. <laughs> we made a joke that the Mars Candy Corporation <laughs> should have been inspired by current events and created a new mascot, a gray M&M, who carries around classified documents. I forgot, you guys, I forgot, 1997, there was a gray M&M. There was a whole marketing event created by M&Ms with the imposter M&M who was gray, and if you found a gray M&M, you'd get a million dollars. Now, I know some people who found them, and they did not turn it in for a million dollars because I don't know what it was, I don't know if it was the gray dye they used or what, because the high when you took one of those <laughs> was out of this world. You remember 97 Shoemaker? Popping grays? <laughs> I mean, sitting by, we'd be listening to the Verve or the Verve pipe. What a time, what a time for Verve bands. 90s. It was a cornucopia of bands with verve in the title. And we had corn. For the life of me, I cannot remember. What made me think that we were wise and would never compromise? Tell you this, though. Married now? Three kids, bills to pay. If I got a gray item in now, I turn it in for the money. I <laughs> uh, got called out on a mispronunciation again, which is bad because I've already gotten in enough trouble with the knitting 
uh, community. I said um, this was uh, someone holding an I Love Wally mug at crotch level. It's pronounced Croche. <laughs> We uh, mentioned Sir Isaac Newton. I said he would ignore, he was so into the idea of gravity, he would ignore it if a naked lady fell into his lap. A lot of you said um, he probably would ignore it. It is uh, speculated that he uh, died a virgin because he thought one person, only one person said this. I didn't do any digging. I don't find the guy that interesting. that he was a virgin because he thought that would give him immortality. And in a way, you know what? He's right, because here we are. Obviously he died, still talking about him, still saying his name. God bless him. While all his other friends were, uh, to use the parlance of the time, out chasing tail, <laughs> he, he knew he would be sitting in the field, watching in an orchard or whatever, just making sure he was the guy who was there <laughs> when the apple came down. Uh, we talked about my mistake two weeks back. Referring to the Rileys as the O'Reillys. Uh, there was an incident I did not mention last week because I had been advised by my legal team to let it play out. <laughs> in the courts. So after I made the mistake, incorrectly, Referred to the Rileys. As the O'Reilly, I found this in my dressing room. <laughs> not, not by itself, with this. <laughs> and you know what I did? Went to HR, immediate, right away, reported it, which is what they told us to do this week. in our Respect in the Workplace seminar. And if that doesn't sound familiar, Wally, it's because they said it in the first 15 minutes. You, I wish you could all see Wally roll into an all staff meeting, dead last, not a care in the world. Sunglasses inside. Just sits down, all his bags. <laughs> Wally don't need no preamble. <laughs> you know what you were good at though, Wally? Scanning the QR code. <laughs> Point is, I call HR, say I got this threatening note in my dressing room, and they say, you know, do you have proof it's, you know, one of the Rileys? And I'm like, who else would leave it there? And they were like, without proof, we can't do anything. And I'm like, when, who's going to stand up to this reign of terror, you know? <laughs> and then she says something, the HR person, always very nice, until this thing, she goes, I'm going to tell you something. If you ever repeat it, I'm going to disavow I ever said it. Let it go. <laughs> it's not worth it. Let it go. <laughs> and I'm not saying... She's a Riley. But when I said, I'm gonna kick it up the ladder, she called me an Egypt. <laughs> I've uh, been complaining about people misusing our, our P.O. box to send uh, Mac Tonight merchandise and crafts. I'm happy to report uh, this has slowed down. I received a very cool gift from a jackal uh, with the request that I show it first and then <laughs> Read the note. Um, this is really very cool. Take a look. And um, I'm guessing because a jackal sent it, I'm, I think I can guess what it is. Dear Seth, your dog Frisbee is with the angels now. It's a skull, 
that uh, <laughs> someone named Mason, thank you, Mason, um, said uh, they got it, poached it, got it, no. Um, <laughs> it's a black backed jackal skull. And uh, this is cool. Uh, it has, the tape is actually there for a reason, I guess. Even after a jackal dies, they don't stop <laughs> yapping. <laughs> Someone also wrote, because I would think this would be, this would like pair very well with everything over here, but I guess. Someone just wrote a very simple note that said, you have too much <laughs> on your desk. <laughs> it might be time to thin that out. Oh, I sang a few lines from Bad, Bad uh, Leroy Brown. Some people uh, were unfamiliar with the song, asked who the original singer was. Jim Crotch. <laughs> Crotchy? <laughs> the clapper uses two claps, not one. He did a thing where Mike Pence was running and the lights would go off every time he clapped and then back on. It's two claps, not one. Bunch of you knew that. And it's just weird how many of the 20-somethings who I assume make up the lion's share of our audience would know that. <laughs> I read the comments from the previous uh, week's corrections, newest first. So I'm going in reverse order. And um, we told, uh, made a prop joke about Amelia Earhart. And so, I read a comment from someone that said, thank you for the prop joke. I might be, but I hope not, the only pilot who watches corrections. The very next one I read, which would have been the previous comment, same person. Their previous comment before the one I just read you was, I honestly don't know why I watch this. <laughs> that must have been so amazing for you. So upset that you leave a comment, and I'm just seconds later, I make a joke specific to your profession. <laughs> what a day. <laughs> we made a lot of flubs regarding the animal kingdom this week. Which means it's time for our brand new segment, Animal Flubs. Animal Flubs, Animal Flubs. It's time to take a look at some animal flubs. From the birds to the bees to the baby bear cubs, it's time for animal flubs. <laughs> and I know you don't need to say baby before you say bear cub. Because in that case, cub means baby. But when you're writing a song on a Thursday afternoon when you really should be working on a closer look, sometimes you're gonna cut a few corners in order to make the rhyme scheme work. Animal flubs, animal flubs. I hope you're all ready for some animal flubs. Call all your pals, buddies, and bubs. It's time for animal flubs. F, L, U, B, S are the five letters you use to spell flubs. Animal flubs. You're right, Al acapella was better. <laughs> we mentioned beef prices rising, but we showed a picture of a dairy cow. That's an animal flub. <laughs> this is an African pygmy hedgehog, the one we commonly have as pets. A European hedgehog would be brown all over without any white. But they're both delicious. <laughs> we did a joke about a bird getting in the house, and we were told the uh, Photoshop here, the size ratio is way off. <laughs> this Eurasian tree sparrow got way scaled up. That's an animal flub. Trump mentioned you'd go to jail for five, year, five years if you uh, killed a bald eagle. But someone said that was only true when bald eagles were endangered and due to conservation efforts, they've been making a comeback. So 
Bad time to be a bald eagle with gambling debts. <laughs> Koalas, oh, we, we had a joke. Here's a, the art card we used. There was a um, radioactive capsule went missing in Australia, and we said, we think we found it. And someone pointed out that the capsule uh, was found in Western Australia, where there are no uh, koalas. Bad animal flub. They said uh, we should have used a, a quokka. I had no idea what a quokka was. I was a little afraid to look because Australia has some weird ass looking animals, um, but it was not that weird. Um, let's take a look at some video of a quokka. <laughs> Seven days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, this has been animal flubs. Animal flubs. <laughs> Can we get a single, Alex? Two minutes for you. <laughs> 